Good morning sewing friends. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Know Me Wave Set by The Handmade Millennial. Um, this is ME2033 and this is the set. Alright, let me talk about what I really love about this set and then some things I'm going to make. First of all, this is my wearable muslin. No kidding. The blue fabric was, somebody gifted me this fabric years ago. Um, the light blue linen I probably bought, maybe I acquired it from somebody else, definitely scraps. I've made shorts and other things from this light blue linen before. And then this sea glass print, which I'm gonna come forward so you can see this. I got this from my local fabric store and I already made another top out of it and I really wanted to use the remnants, so I put it together. And as you can see, this is all really color blocked. It's got these fun panels. It's got a flat front waist here and a back elastic waist in the back. Now, the only thing I did with this pattern that you should know about is it's a McCall's and I had been warned to go down in size on McCall's. I haven't sewn a big, I guess I call them a big six now. I haven't sewn a big um, Simplicity slash McCall's slash big pattern group um, pattern in a long time. And uh, I measure in at a much larger size. I measure it in almost an 18, but I sewed a 16, which is the top of the size range for this envelope. It's a little weird. If you are maybe a 20, if you measure in at a 20 when you do this, um, you're definitely going to want to decide which pattern envelope you're going to buy. So check the measurements because you will be going down a size. So definitely check and see before you do that. Um, you might need to go down a pattern envelope as well. So a couple things um, that I noticed about this pattern. First of all, I made no changes. So this is directly out of the envelope. And I think on the model here, which is the handmade millennial herself, it's a little bit more cropped in the ankle. And in that case, you have to use the length and shorten line to make it a little shorter on me. So I may do that next time. Maybe make it a little shorter. Or I might just decide I like this length because I think it does, you know, hit just right at the ankle bone there. Um, and I think that's a good length. So I might leave it. The other change that I'm going to make, if you take a look, I think the front fits really nice, but look at this in the back. You see that? That is just too much room in the back. And other people complained about too much room in the front, but I think for me, it's too much room in the back. And I want to pinch that out um, on my garment and take out a little wedge out of the sewing pattern and just don't cut that like the wedge out of the pattern and the facing. So I'll share with how I do that on my blog so that you guys can get an idea of any alterations you might need to make. And I think that will improve the fact that it wants to fall off the shoulder because there's just too much room in the back. The front is okay. I think my bust is big enough. I'm a 34 double D and I think my bust is big enough that it definitely, and my, maybe my posture is good enough, I guess, that I definitely get uh, the right shape here across the front chest, which is a really nice squared off neckline. So a couple things I didn't do on this pattern because I knew it was my muslin is I did not interface this thing, uh, this facing on the inside, but I did understitch it. So understitching is where you pull the facing out and you stitch right on top of the facing like that and you create that little understitch so it turns under. They didn't say to understitch, they just said to use a facing and I think understitching works better. And also I hate interfacing, I think I've told you this like a million times, I only use it where absolutely necessary like in waistbands and things like that. So a couple of other things, when I put in this elastic, I have the kind of elastic that you sew through when you're done, but I wanted to test this out so I've not finished sewing the elastic and I didn't like their method of construction on the elastic. It seems really intuitive, but it was really hard, well maybe this is the piece of elastic I was using, to kind of line up the stitching in the ditch of the elastic when you put the waistband together. So I have to go back at that and see if I can improve that a little bit. And also I need to finish the inside because I literally just like left it open on the inside so that I could, you know, decide if I like this elastic before I stitch it in. And then I also would put a line of elastic, sew a line across the top to keep that elastic from twisting and wash. So I think the elastic feels good. I'm just going to wait till the end of the day and decide if I want to replace it with looser elastic or if I like if I like the fit. I don't want to go too loose because I, I am losing weight and I, I feel like I'm gonna be upset if I top stitch it and then I you know lost some weight. So I don't want to go too uh, too loose. So the wave set, let me just show you the diagram here. I'll also put this up on the screen so you can see it um, uh, throughout the whole video. But as you can see, it's got a sleeveless version, it's got the cap sleeve version, and then it's got the pants with the elastic waist here. The pants are a barrel leg. 
And that means that they are trim and fitted through here, but then they get a little wider right by the knee and then taper down. I think that's a really fun modern look. Um, the bare leg is, is kind of in right now. Um, it's not a wide leg. I mean, it does taper to the ankle, but it gives a little bit more width, and I think that's a fun look. So I am overall super happy about this, like super delighted. I was so excited last night to just put this on and take some photos and toss them up on IG and let you guys take a look at them because I just think this set is just so cute. Now, for my next one, you can make this in a knit or a woven and you know I'm like huge on that because if you're gonna make things three times, you gotta have some variety. So my next one that I wanna do is going to be for fall and winter and I have a really nice black herringbone double knit. So one's face is black, one face is a black and gray herringbone, and I've always thought I should make something that I can use, see both sides. And it occurred to me last night that th that would be the perfect set for this. And it is a knit, it's a stable knit, so I'm definitely going to be making this again after I make the alteration in the back to fix that. Otherwise, I'm not going to make any other changes to this. I think it fits really well, and I think it's a really nice look. Um, the black and gray is going to be really cool for fall and winter, and I'll definitely wear it with a pair of sneakers. Um, in the fall and uh, I even have some little black booties that I might wear it with too. So I genuinely think that this is a super fun summer top. Now today is our last 73 or 72 degree day. It's my coffee maker. It's done. Um, this is our last 72 degree day and uh, I just had to wear it. So I sewed last night to like 10 15 trying to get it done which is way late for me to be sewing because I, I don't like to make mistakes. So um, that just shows you the enthusiasm and excitement that I've had about making this one. Now I could have made it over the summer, but um, I got stuck on making, not stuck, I got uh, intent on making some other garments that I was gonna take to Europe. And I just wasn't sure I wanted to have this sort of untested one made the first time when I went to Europe. And um, uh, in a way I'm glad I did because I had an opportunity to work, have an opportunity to work through some of the changes that I need to make in the upper back of the top right there um the upper back of the top but overall everything else is perfect the rise is really nice as you can see we just got a little tiny bit of belly button there at the top so the rise is good i got a little bit of a tom amount of tom not not huge but a little bit so um i got a little bit of a tom there but there's plenty of rise to get over the top of that um, there's good rise in the back it doesn't come up too high doesn't come up too low the top is kind of a nice slight one inch overlap and it's cropped a little bit so it's got a nice fun shape um, the pants are just awesome. Of course, they have pockets. Um, the pants are just awesome. I love the bare leg shape. I love the slightly cropped. I love the wave. So that is just really, really cool. So overall, I would say this pattern is a definite winner in my wardrobe. I <clears throat> like to sew everything three times. And I think even if you look at this and you say, wow, you would have three garments that have this really distinctive wave on it, would you really want to do that? Well, I think if you do it, if you think about fabrications, I think you can make it so that it's um, it's something like, you know, here where she shows it really bright and then also a little bit more subdued. She also has a black and white version. Um, I would say if you're going to make this and you're going to make this, um, if you want to make this more subdued but you still want the fun shape, make it in the same fabric. like Or like a tone on tone, like a cream and a white or... Uh, a light blue and a medium blue or a black and a gray or something like that which is kind of what I'm going to do. Make it in a tone on tone or even um, if you have like a crepe back satin or something fabric that has like two good sides, make it with the opposite side so it's just like slightly lighter than the other. Um, I think there's an opportunity here to make this so it's not so dramatically contrasting like I've done. Mine's sort of muted and I think that that makes it a little bit easier. Of course, mine still does have some enough contrast that you can really see the, the different things. The great thing about it too is if you have a, like a half a yard of fabric left over from something like this, I had like a half a yard or maybe even a quarter yard, like, you know, something like this. I had actual scraps of this. You can use this to make scraps, you know, make this out of scraps. And so it really helps you use up a lot of those pattern or a lot of those fabric scraps that, you know, you just don't really have enough to make like one thing, but you can definitely incorporate it into this garment. So the legs turned out um, really cool. So they're opposite. As you can see, I've got linen and print here, and then I've got linen and print on the back. That's intentional. I could have done both prints, right? And then both linen on this leg too as well. Um, but I didn't. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. And I did the same thing with the back as well, with the print down here instead of up here on this side. So um, I did want to have the coordination of these two colors here. So that was intentional. 
um, to have those two colors here because I really liked the look that it kind of creates a streamlined sort of uniform look there. So um, this is overall a really fun pattern. I really like it. I think there's a lot of options to do something fun with it with some minor alterations to the back of that pattern, which other people have made both back and front alterations in the um, neckline. If you're like a narrow chest, um, that might definitely be something you want to take a look at and maybe do a tissue fitting first or maybe even make a muslin of the top of the two tops just to see if that's something for you. Um, otherwise, I think that's a minor thing. I'm not going to quibble too much about it. I'm definitely going to wear this one, um, but I'm definitely going to make that change, especially when I move into wearing this as a knit. So that's my um, extensive review. I have a blog post up at my blog. Take a look there. I'll have more pictures. I'll have more detailed things, you know, like through the construction that I was making so you can kind of see. Um, the designer does recommend that you pin the crap out of this. In fact, I think she even says that, that you pin the crap out of this in the video because there is a video so long of this um, available in the pattern envelope. You just click it with your phone and it pops right up. So there's a video so long. She recommends that you pin the crap out of it. And I strongly recommend that. Pin and clip, pin and notch, pin and notch because you will get a nice smooth result. And as you can see, I didn't get any puckers or anything like that. It really did fit really well with the, um, I was really able to get it pressed flat. And then um, when you, you press it to one side, which is easy to do, and then I just edge zigzag just to keep the fabric from fraying, that's all. <clears throat> I did, you could even serge it if you wanted to when you were done. Um, so that's it, this is the um, No Me Wave set from The Handmade Millennial. And uh, strongly recommend this pattern. I think it fits really well. I think it's really fun. It's got a, definitely a youthful vibe. I'm 54, so you know I'm not uh, 24 or 34, um, but I definitely think that um, you can pull this off. Um, and it's a really good fit. We just went down one size to make any other alterations, so I'm kind of impressed uh, McCall's simplicity. Uh, it's been a long time since I've sewn. Um, bought a big you know, a uh, sun parent company brand and summit. So I'm pretty impressed. Thank you again for a really, really awesome pattern handmade millennial and go out and buy yourself and make this wave set.